Fuck. One, two, three. Showtime. Here is Swishalicious, the switch hitting right fielder. 2009 World Series champs with the New York Yankees. The last time the Bronx Bombers were able to pick up a ring. As the 2010s, the first decade in franchise history, they were not World Series champions. Nick, a big reason why they took home that last trophy as Bill Leroy, six-year banana, four and a half years at North Georgia with Mr. Lewigs on the bump. And just like him, four years collegiately with the Bananas, now in year two as a pro, set up just a bit inside. And Swish on the 2-0, serving it out to left center. Tumbling attempt by D.R. Meadows. It clangs off his glove. Swisher strolling into second with a leadoff double. Heck of a start for the former big leaguers. That's a professional piece of hitting, something you expect from Nick Swisher batting at the top of this order. He got a good pitch on the outside part of the plate and shot it out to the opposite way. Great attempt there by D.R. Meadows, but just not able to get that in his glove. As the legendary radio voice of the Yankees would say on a Swisher home run, it's jolly old St. Nick, one of the happiest guys in the history of America's pastime. On second base at George Kataris, bouncing it to Dalton Malden, the songbird of our generation. will retire the catcher representing the Milwaukee Brewers here tonight. Guy who went two for three with a ribeye back on March 11th. Ended up being the reason why the MLB PAA snagged a point in what was the fastest banana ball game of all time, an hour and 35 minutes. For context, this is the 58th contest in banana ball history. The sport is still young. We have 80, 87 games in total on this tour across 33 cities and 20 states. Michael Morse, back up the middle, bat flip to the moon, Swisher scores, and the MLB PAA up one zip early in the first. Yeah, you're seeing these guys staying loose out there for the MLB PAA. You saw Nick Swisher a little surprised by Kyle Weeks throwing behind him. Didn't phase him in the slightest. And how about Michael Morse coming up to take on me as walk-up song, getting the crowd into it, and on the first pitch he sees, ambushes that pitch from Kyle, shoots it up the middle for an RBI single. We've seen all four former major leaguers swinging at the first strike they saw from Mr. Lewigs early on in this ball game. Foul ball not caught by a fan there. Remember, if you catch a foul ball on the fly, it's an out. Two were snagged last night. One for the bananas, one for the party animals. The cleanup hitter, Lance Necro, the third baseman. Quickly behind 0-2. Now one and two. Now Michael Morse, now two for four in his banana ball career. Also nearly put one out of Grayson Stadium about a month and a half ago when these teams met for the first time. That is a nasty heater. Looked like it had some sink to it. And Necro checking for holes in his bat. The four-year man for the San Francisco Giants retired swinging. And here is Luis Montanez. He completes the trio of returners for the former major leaguers. Spent time with the Orioles and Cubbies. And he swings at the first good pitch he sees. Into the crowd. They say caught by a fan, and Vincent Chiaomi confirms it. Luis Montanez pops it out. Where is our hero? To that kid! Are you kidding me? And being carried by the man they call Daddy Kurt, Mr. Kurt Kessler, down towards the field. 
This young fan is about to be honored by a full capacity George M. Steinbrenner crowd. Oh, what an awesome moment for that young fan. He's going to go and get a ton of congratulations and party it up with the bananas. And man, if you're Luis Montanez, I bet you can't believe that that just happened. The first time one of the Major League Baseball players alumni have bowed out to a fan. Yeah, Ben Kozlowski, who pitched for the MLB PAA back on March 11th, actually before that caught a Tanner Thomas pop fly in a banana ball game between the Nanners and Party Animals. So they had recorded a fan out, but now they have fouled out to a fan as well as you take a look at the illustrious resume of Bronson Arroyo. And there is that legendary windup. The leg kick to the moon, a straight leg. And Mr. Arroyo, the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Famer, is trying to protect a one-run lead. Remember in banana ball, if you win an inning, you get a point. So he has to keep the bananas off the board for the MLB PAA to grab their second point in this series. Well, Arroyo, an excellent pitcher for his during his time, and it's going to be really fun to see him throw his curveball. He throws a ton of variations of a curveball, a great 12-6, a sweeping curve, and we may see it take all other forms of angles, as I think he goes first pitch breaker here to Dan Obers to start the bottom of the first. Boy, Bronson looks loosey-goosey out there on the bump. He is relaxed and taking off for first. George Katoris was ready to grab a fresh ball from Vincent Chapman across George's seven-year MLB career. Anytime there was a pass ball or wild pitch with nobody on, well, that's not even what it would be ruled because nobody can take first base. But in banana ball, uh, it is fair game. That's the second steal of first base on the tour for Mr. Oberst. Ties Dakota McFadden for the team lead. And the Bananas have speed on the bases. And 15 for 18 in stolen base attempts. And he is the innings tying run and make it 16 for 19. Check that. Make it 17 for 20. I wasn't counting him grabbing first base just there. High pop off the bat of Eric Jones. Andrew Miller, good adjustment in his professional debut at first base. And he's one for one in opportunities. Yeah, you, you can tell he's thrilled about making that catch. <laughs> Took a little journey there, but he gets a nice little uh, glove, glove fist bump of affirmation there from Josh Renicki at second base. So Jones, the former Minnesota Twins and Seattle Mariners minor leaguer. Oh, good pickoff there from Arroyo with Montanez covering. Pops out to the 2015 AL Reliever of the Year when Miller was with the Yanks. He's representing the Red Sox today as Michael Vitamin Deeb, the former Chicago White Sox product, at the dish. The inning tying run in scoring position. And Arroyo, he was born for banana ball. Oh, diving stop. Check that. Past Renicky. Dan being waved around third. The throw from Swisher all the way in. And the Bananas have tied the first just like that. The inning winning run in scoring position. Good base running by Vitamin Deeb. Yeah, the Bananas, a much younger team than these MLB players alumni, so they're going to take advantage of getting extra bases against these guys. Dan actually ran through a stop sign from Heath Bell at third base. It's a pretty good thing that Dan ended up scoring there for the Bananas' sake. Now Dakota McFadden, the man with the walk-off double last night that drove in deep, who has been pinch run for by Malachi Flash the Kid Mitchell. Fastest man in banana ball. Son of Dennis Mitchell. Gold medal sprinter for the United States in the 90s. And DMAC, just like Malachi on second. In his third tour, he ropes it down the left field line. That's going to do it for the first. Malachi touching home plate. Nanners win it 2-1, to one, and they're up 1-0 in points. Yeah, that was just excellent work by the Bananas, really using their speed and base running ability to win that inning. And how about this for Dakota McFadden? Back-to-back -back innings with a walk-off. He walks off last night's contest against the Party Animals and now starts the first inning of this game with a walk-off walk up against the MLB PAA. Let's throw it down to Jesse Cole. Fans, as the players make their way through the crowd, celebrating. 
I want to make, and you guys get loud, right here for the 10 year old who made the catch, catching the foul ball. Let's hear it for Brody! Great job, Brody! All right, now on the field. We have a contest here, it's called the Pie Daddy Race. It is Wells and James, and they gotta get a pie and pie their daddy. Whoever pies their dad the most in the fastest period of time wins. On your mark, get set, go. All right, Wells is running around. Get the pies, they're going for this one. Go get them. Oh, he throws it. And then Wells, Get some, all right. James, go for the next one. This is exactly how we wrote it up. Here he goes. Oh, jeez. And the gentle one here. All right, and here goes Wells. And here goes James. Who's gonna get it done first? Oh, he froze the third. Who's gonna get the last one? He's going for number two. And the winner, James. And you're gonna learn the first time you've been grounded. Congratulations. Well, if you have been a fan of the Savannah Bananas since the team's inception as a collegiate summer ball squad back in 2016, we have seen hundreds, if not thousands, of pies to the face. Good to pick up eight more here early tonight. Kyle Lewig's back out on the bump, supported with two runs from his offense to stave off what could have been an MLB PAA first inning win as Mike Morse drove in Nick Swisher. But instead, the Nanners up by a point, and it's going to be 6-7-8 for the former, legi former major leaguers Jason Romano. Kevin Reese and Andrew Miller do to swing it here. And Romano to Kyle. He'll hike it between the legs. And that is the world tour leader in trick plays by a pitcher. Number five for Cowboy Kyle. Kyle Lewigs with incredible feel when it comes to time to execute trick plays. That gives the Bananas 95 on the tour, which means they are five away from 100 on the season. It would be magical if it could be here tonight as you get to look at that one one more time. EJ finishing it off with the bare hand. As Kevin Reese, the left fielder for the MLB PAA, will swing it. Guy who got two opportunities in the bigs in 05 and 06, both because Hideki Matsui landed on what was then the, D, uh, the DL. And now with an 0-2 count on him. Cowboy Kyle getting the possible strikeout clap going. Trying to K, the vice president of player development for the New York Yankees. And on four hops to Dalton Malden at first, who will add a fifth to the play. Trick play for the songbird of our generation. He's 13 for 14 in his attempts on the tour and a quick two outs for Kyle. And this is where you get to see the Bananas unload a ton of trick plays in challenger games, especially with the MLB PAA, guys who just get to first base a little bit slower than, say, the party animals. The Bananas with more times to set and do some of that awesome trickery that the fans have come to love. Well, here is a fascinating at-bat, Andrew Miller, under the glove of Mr. Lewigs. Dalton Malden just barely grabs him over at first base. First swing for Miller since the 2018 MLB season, at least off a live pitcher. He was taking BP today. And the former MLB guy's first baseman grounds out. Quick inning for Cowboy Kyle. Two minutes and 13 seconds on the MPI. That's good for the season average right there. And 
as we head to the bottom of the second inning. What a treat this is. The starting pitcher for the MLBPAA, Bronson Arroyo with the mic on him. How you living out there? I'm all right. Can you hear me, Biko? Loud and clear, Bronson. Um, this, this is beautiful out here, man. It's like nice and relaxed. Bottom of the ninth. You know, your head's on the chopping block every inning. It's beautiful. <laughs> That's a fact, man. You've got no runs from support here in the second, so one for the Bananas on the walk it off. Is there a little extra adrenaline for you with that? Oh, I got, I got to put up a zero right here. We could be done. <laughs> That's a fact, man. Now, how does it feel, Bronson, as far as I am concerned, to have the most recognizable windup of the 21st century? <laughs> That's due, to, that's due to Dwight Gooden. That's what my eight-year-old mind formed out of a Dwight Gooden uh, wind-up from the mid-80s. That's amazing, and uh, it worked out just fine for you because a Cincinnati Reds Hall of Famer, uh, a, a very illustrious career across 16 years in the bigs. But what is this atmosphere like compared to everywhere else you've played? Oh, this is, this is a rock show, man. This is a rock show right here. This is... This is a mixture of playing in a playoff game and playing in winter ball in Puerto Rico. <laughs> this is where it's at. You got the band, you got the horns, you got the crowd getting after it. Now, how different is it for you trying to entertain fans with your music compared to your pitching? Oh, man, these days it's a little bit easier being on the stage, that's for sure. <laughs> I used to think it was the other way around, but now checking out checking out how my arm feels in the first inning, it's like, ooh, there's a, there's a reason why you don't pitch anymore. <laughs> that's for sure. It's going to be 5-6-7 for the Bananas as DR Meadows... Chicken dance there up is. to the dish. There it is. See, we're trying to keep it when you, when you don't throw very hard. You try to you try to keep the pace up. It's like when you're a bad golfer. You are. Uh, <laughs> if you're a bad golfer, you better play quick. See, you've got shades of Tim Wakefield out on the mound. Easy breezy, beautiful. Oh, Ooh. over your head. Yep. No chance. Yeah, there's no chance for Luis. Not a barrel in the stadium, but a line drive in the book, unfortunately. Now we got no box in this league. That's a fact, man, and, and I've right. seen you getting creative out there already. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking right here. We might go inside move and let him steal second base. <laughs> Take him down right here. <laughs> I like that. We'll see what Vincent Chapman and Reggie Liggins, our umpires tonight, say. Because there's no box, but you know, it's it's kind of a feel thing. That's right. But you can get pretty tricky. Oh, that's right there. That's 77 miles an hour right there, Rico. That's a good chuck to get ahead of Ryan Cox, the banana shortstop. DR off on the pitch, and he's going to be in standing. Uh oh. Cannonballing into second. Meadows' ninth steal on the tour. Cox down the right field line and foul. <laughs> so what what pitches are you relying on most here tonight, Bronson? Oh, I'm throwing a fastball and a breaking ball, just changing some arm angles. You know, I feel like an alien out here to tell you the truth. It's like uh, I got uh, George calling the pitches behind the plate <laughs> and uh, give him a little bit of that. Hot shot through here the hole. Nick Swisher is going to fire it home. DR gets a stop sign from Tyler Gillum. So guys on the corners here in the inning winning run 90 feet away. All right. All right, Bronson, you have the TikTok superstar. Jackson Olsen has over a million followers on the tick and the talk. I love it. And five walk-offs on the tour thus far. <laughs> nice bender down and in. Olsen homers in two of his last four games. Two homers in his last four games? Yeah, I'm sure you've got it under control. There it is. Just a bit out in front. You think you're living in the mid-70s out there with the fastball? Oh, uh, it might be in the mid-60s, but this breaking ball right here is in the 50s. <laughs> 
And now a 3-1 count. All right. And we'll need a strike or else the inning's over. Not to give you any uh, added pressure. There it is. To second, Renicky to Montagnez, back to first. <laughs> Not in time. Game's Dio's going to score on it. Uh, yeah, that was a tricky play for your yeah. infielders. Thank you so much for slapping the mic on, man. You got to know banana ball rules right there, huh? Oh, that's a fact. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's you it. You can't turn two on that, yeah. No, no. And uh, I don't think you guys have had extensive practice on, uh, on any kind of defense recently as a team. <laughs> Bronson, have fun the rest of the way, Big Tiger. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Bronson Arroyo into the dugout. I am sure we will be getting a musical performance later on tonight as the Bananas with a quick 2-0 lead. Winning the first 2-1, the second one zip. And Jackson on a little infield ground out. Picks up his sixth walk off of the tour thus far. That was the bizarre 4-6-3, only for one out on the play. And it is boogie time. We'll let Maceo, Jared Donaldson, Christian Dearman, Alex Ziegler, and Malachi Mitchell dance us into the third inning. Well, Maceo and the boys, tremendous as per usual, and Biko Scala and Josh Chalevsky with a very special guest in the booth. It is the two-time NL reliever of the year, three-time All-Star, Mr. Heath Bell in his second round in Banana Ball. And uh, how is this atmosphere tonight, my man? At atmosphere is pretty awesome. I mean, Savannah was great, but, you know, we kind of feel like we're on a big league field where we feel like we're in spring training all over again. So it's great. I don't even think the Yankees get a fan like this. So. Yeah, no, it's it's an intimate 4,000 in Grayson Stadium, but uh, you up that by two and a half here in George M. Steinbrenner Field. And uh, did you ever experience a spring tra a training game with this kind of crowd? No, never experienced anything. Um you want me to keep talking or? Oh, yeah, you're good. You're okay, good. We're so just off I never, I never experienced anything like this before, especially rain and everybody stick, stuck around and this and that. Yes. So that's that's where the awesome part is. Chance for the fans to make Come a on. play. Yeah, the fans are not liking us right now. They've almost caught three balls against us. Yes, well, so. it, it would be tough if they did it to Matt Joyce, the hometown kid, representing the hometown team. Come on, Matt. Born and raised in Tampa, an all-star with the Rays. Matt's Back a great guy. Oh, great my guy. gosh. He just showed up. He just showed up and <laughs> said, I'm going to start playing. He was running a little late because, you know, he's from here, so he can do what he wants. <laughs> and you guys were at that same All-Star game in 2011. Yeah. yeah, he he raked. He raked. He was good. That was my infinite slide. <laughs> that's a fact. Yeah, that's, we, that's one thing I'm known for now. Oh, shit. He <laughs> stepped out of the box, and they threw a strike on him. Oh, my goodness. Matt, gravy. you don't know how to play banana ball. Let's go. Yeah, Vincent Chapman does not give you a mulligan, even if it's your first banana ball game of all time. That is our first strikeout with the final strike being stepping out of the box on the tour so far on uh, game 28. Really? It's first one? First one. We've had a couple strikes. Rick and Keel had strike two called on him in West Palm Beach, but uh, then he struck out with a swing. <laughs> okay. I like those swing and miss strikeouts. Second, TikTok time. Second K on the night for Mr. Lewix and Heath's right. Synchronized dance with Kyle. Cox at short, Malden at second, and Meadows in center. 
like they're doing a little imaginary skiing. Oh, some disco. Let's go. There's a lot of, a lot of steps here. <laughs> a lot of booty shaking. As per hey. usual. And the oh, heater. that was low. Gets the bottom of the zone, according to Vincent Chapman. That was low. That this was is low. I've never seen him do a TikTok and not throw a strike. <laughs> he always throws balls. That cowboy hat, he not even from Texas. <laughs> That's a, actually, he was born in Texas, but he grew up in Richmond Hill, Georgia. He's not from Texas. <laughs> you, you're not going he to. moved to Georgia. <laughs> Georgia's not Texas. I'm in Texas. <laughs> Yeah, you're in the Austin area nowadays. Yeah, out North Austin. It's like outside Austin. We don't like to say we're in Austin because Austin is kind of crazy. <laughs> in a bad way, not a good way. Keep Austin weird, as the kids say. Yeah, they're not. It's it's not like that you anymore. Like Austin weird was kind of cool, but and now it's kind of just like I don't know, bad, bad weird. Oh no! Well, that's an egregious call by Vincent Chapman. I think that was a good three inches outside. I think outside. Jesse's paying the umpire right now to make the bananas win. Keith, I would I would take notes and try and do that out on the mound tonight. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to pitch conventionally in the ninth inning. I'm gonna, I brought a couple little gimmicks with me, so it'll be interesting. Now Let's that, see what happens. That was a really I, interesting at bat there. Josh Renicky, uh, a guy who was a center fielder at UCLA in college, but then pitched throughout the entirety of his MLB career in uh, an unfortunate way to end that at bat with the 100-foot pitch. Yeah, I know. I mean, we don't even bat that long. Jeez. All right, now the, pitchers. the infielders are going to get involved. Jackson Olsen shows Swisher he's throwing a heater, and it's outside. Let's see what Ryan Cox can do. So when Reese, uh, Kevin Reese was up there, I tried to deke the third baseman, get in front of him. If you saw that uh, two innings ago, standing right next to him, I'm going, I went out there. I was like, I'm going to talk to you the whole time. I love and that. Reese almost hit the ball down the line. I'm like, dude, two more feet. Swisher's got a double and a run scored. And swinging 3-0, cranks it foul. 3-0! The last, the last, gonna walk you, walk him. Last piece of the puzzle, Eric Jones. He doesn't even know where to go. He's going to get some rosin. He was the bullpen catcher for the Mariners last summer. He knows a whole lot about pitching. And the count full at 3-2 and two for Kyle to toe the oh, slab again. He loses Troy, his glove. You don't need a glove. <laughs> if you're a true Texan, you don't need a glove. <laughs> Uh, with Swisher in the box. Come on, Nick. I feel a little safer with some leather on the left hand. That is ball right. four. Here's our first sprint for the former major leaguers. All seven bananas behind the pitcher and catcher have to touch the ball before it is live. And a prudent decision to stay at first base for Swishalicious. Some of our guys are forgetting how to play, like George on the pass, the pass ball. Now make up for it right here. Get a base hit. This is Get a Nick to second. This is a banana ball vet here too with Guitaris. I, I know. I hear you. I hear you. Let's go. And there should be, you know, we should have. It should be one one right now. The score. Yeah, that's a strike. Now, did you, Kataris, and any of the other guys who played in game one get together and, and watch any tape from game one to, to bring you some new stuff for tonight? We were just watching TikTok and uh, <laughs> you know, YouTube. That's about it. Actually, you know what? I was going to – I had a great idea a couple weeks ago to come pitch and have, like, two guys with me on the mound and, you know, pretend like we the batter doesn't know who's got the ball, you know, kind of switch around. And then I see the freaking bananas go to it. <laughs> I was trying to do something new and try to think of something new, and then they did it like last week. Well, you've got the mind for banana land. And I was Heath. like, man, I was like, I was all pumped. <laughs> Tell my wife, like, oh, I got this. Tell my kids, oh, I got this. Oh, sit, sit. Come on, sit. Run into each other. Michael Deeb, he will sit. Finds the ball as well. Kyle Lewig's now one run across three innings tossed. Have we got a new pitcher this inning, or Bronson's still pitching? I believe the plan is for Josh Renicky to come in from second. Josh is going to pitch? All right. There he goes. 
We'll see how your defense changes because of it. Yeah, I'm in the fifth inning. I might be playing. Uh, in the fifth inning, I might be playing shortstop. <laughs> I, listen, I teased that on our pregame show uh, that Luis Montanez really wants to play the outfield barefooted, and yeah. and you're here to be his hero to take over at short. Yeah, he, he he told me that last time, and then he never got a chance to go out there. And I went out there and said, "Are you going to do it?" And he goes, "Who's going to play short?" And I go, "Dude, I'll do it for one inning." <laughs> you know, in my men's league, it's thirty and over. These guys are a little bit younger than thirty, but you know, I play short and third, so. You know, we don't we don't move as fast, you know, but we don't have canes yet. We're not 50 and over. My Only 30 and over. My sources in uh, the North Austin uh, Beer League Baseball uh, Writers Association have told me that you're the Shohei Otani of the league. Yeah, that could happen. Yeah. That could be. That could be. Now, uh, Heath, can you walk me through your weigh-in before the game uh, with stilts and, and your magnificent outfit? Uh, well, you know, it's one of those outfits that, you know, I got a long time ago that, that I was trying to spruce up, you know, with the wife and she didn't <laughs> like. And and I got a text message after, you know, the whole way in and, you know, I got the ladder so I could be taller than stilts out there. Um, she goes, that's not good because she didn't want me to wear the overalls again. So I'm like, everybody wanted me to wear the overalls except for the wife. So I wore something a little different. Listen, so. it's nice. I like the outfit change. Keep the yeah. people on their toes. Keep them on their toes. So uh, who knows what's going to be the next way. And so, uh, yeah, we'll be interesting. And you I, had the you had the high ground on him. That's a power move. That's you know Star Wars. I had the high ground. <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, Obi Wan. Don't a... try it. I got the high ground. Step <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I don't think. I, well, I knocked Stilts off. He's not out there. No. I know, we sweeped his leg. Step. Uh, I didn't. Um, I didn't win again. Uh, and not to bring up a, a tough memory for you, but uh, in your first, uh, your debut in Banana Ball, Stilts yeah. got his first career walk off off you. What are you thinking as you're facing a 10 foot nine man in the box? Uh, I threw two strikes and they said, no, they're balls. And I'm like, well, okay, where am I supposed to throw? And the umpire goes, just let him hit it. So I lobbed it up to him. Hey, go hit this ball. And he hit it. Uh, Stilts, you know, hey, that's a great memory. And I can, you know, when you guys go back at Banana Ball history and all that, you're going to see me give up that hit. So a lot of these guys play World Series teams and stuff and did a great thing. And we just dropped the ball at first base because uh, that's a pitcher out there. Um, <laughs> They're not going to even let me play now because I'm a pitcher. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to live on because when you guys show stilts, I'm there. Now, do you feel like any kind of rivalry is brewing between you and stilts? <laughs> I th a little bit. <laughs> I, I feel like after today, after I got the high ground, he was a little offended because he's always been the tallest guy, and now all of a sudden I was the tallest guy, even though he walked away with, you know, scissor beats paper. But, um, yeah, so there's a little rivalry going on. So we'll see what happens next time I face him. Maybe I'll throw him a banana instead of a baseball. So Colin Ballister was the man unable to secure the pop-up from Danny Hosley. He has replaced Andrew Miller at first base. A hurler for a hurler. And it looks like... I would have laughed if he would have dropped that ball first. That would have been really funny. Well, he's, uh, throw a strike. Throw a strike. He's back and better than ever. Catch the ball! Oh. Does it work off a of bounce? No. What? That's like 1818 18 baseball or 1880 18 baseball. It's a fact. I've, I've seen bounce it played. Once. Oh, yeah. yeah. Every you guys have better music than we do. Why? That is uh, a question for Shark. Shark? Yeah, our, our DJ and PA announcer. So above my pay grade is oh, that's okay. going to be ball four and things could be ugly here. Your teammates don't have, know what to do. Yeah, don't correct. Know what to do. And Danny, we have a lot of pitchers out playing defense, and the inning's over. Danny Hosley is. All right, come on in, guys. Swishers, look at Swisher out there going. Uh, the inning's over. What? Yeah, that happened quickly. Fourth walk off of the tour for Bill Leroy, who gets it on the sprint. And Hosley scores for him first after reaching on the error. He was off on the pitch, and the guy runs like a deer. So it's going to be tough to get it to all seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher in time to nab the Bananas right fielder racing around the diamond. It's 3 nothing, but it is awful early. Was there was there any kind of strategy being being shared in the locker room from you know the guys like you? And, we tried to 
tell some of the guys how to play. Yeah. Here's here's the bad part. I think we'd have a better chance if it wasn't raining and we could get on the field and actually show because, like, the first time we did the walk and we threw the ball around, everybody kind of, okay, it took us a couple times to figure it out. Okay, this makes sense. What we're supposed to do. Now it's like, guys are like, what? What do we jog in? What are we doing? And, you know, so, and we didn't get a chance to swing on the field. And, you know, a lot of us probably haven't been on the field swinging anyway. Yeah. So um, we tried to tell them, but, you know, the rain kind of, I think, hurt us a little bit. It really did. As you can see, every inning we're losing. Well, what, what do you think is the trickiest part about adapting to the sport of banana ball? The trickiest part? Um... Okay, I think the trickiest part is the pitchers. The pitchers don't uh, – we're – if you watch us, we're actually trying to pitch and do it like we're supposed to, like waiting for the batters ready. Bananas are not doing that. They're just throwing it. They're stepping. They're delaying. They're joking around, pulling around, quick pitching, slow pitching, where we're not used to that. And our hitters are kind of like we're trying to have fun, but we're not realizing like, hey, it's going to be quick, 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 quick. So – and we're also from the era with no uh, time, you know, the – The pitch clock. No pitch, pitch clock. clock. So, you know, it's one of those things you had all the time in the world, this and that. You, you could do what you wanted. You could step out. Now it's like, wait, you know, I'm supposed to have fun. I'm supposed to joke around, laugh with them. They're they're going to quick pitch me, do this, 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 and I'm supposed to hit. <laughs> so, you know, I know Mike's been uh, swinging and get, trying to get ready for this one. So he took uh, last game really offense that he didn't do well. So it's uh, – it's, you know, we just need some returners, that's all. Well, listen, didn't do well is is a rough statement for Mike Morris, who had a 398-foot flyout, warning track power, and went one for three. Plus, he's got an RBI single tonight, so two for four with a ribeye in his banana ball career. But you, you've got to admit that... Yeah, you know, on a normal night, people were like, dude, that's actually, you had a good night. We're right. like, no, no, <laughs> that should have been out. I should have hit, like, you know, three <laughs> three base hits, <laughs> you know, so, yeah. We, it's funny, we're older now, but as soon as we get up there, we feel like we're 25 again, and we can do whatever we want to do. And when we swing or we throw, it just doesn't go as fast or as hard anymore. <laughs> and then we come away going, ah, oh, this hurt. Yeah. So, well, Speaking of a guy who feels like he's 25 and just does what he wants to do, Vincent Chapman calls time, dusts off the plate, and then will boogie for a good half a minute. You got any of those moves in your repertoire? Only in the bedroom, guys. Only in the bedroom. <laughs> Not any for you guys to see. You <laughs> might see the body and the belly and all that stuff and weigh in, but the moves are for help. That's good. The moves are for help. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, uh, we respect your privacy there, Heath. <laughs> it's a shame. It's, it's been married for over 20 years. It's, it stays at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not flaunting it for everybody. Here's three, four, five for the MLB PAA. Oh, he uh, wanted that. Chance one. for the fans. Drop the ball. God, it fell. It fell. Fell. Yeah, they dropped it. Thank you. I got a feeling more fans are going to come with gloves. Remember when you were a kid? You, know, you guys are young. We used to show, always show up and with a glove. This uh, bad. Oh, that was me. He and people were like, "Why you bring a glove?" I got my glove signed by Jared Weaver when he was on the Angels in Camden Park. Jared Weaver. And then I used it for like five more years. I, You know, I, when I was a kid, I used to remember getting balls from whoever. Yes. And um, then I would go play for him in the street, play with him in the street. Talk about Look Michael at him. Look Morris. Look at Mike go. Look at Mike go. <laughs> Mike Morris riding his bat I'll like it's back. a horse. <laughs> And thinks about too. He will swim his way. At least interpretive dance Atta wise. Boy. Back to the bag. Two for two on the night. See, Three. I told you he was, he was out for blood. Guys, out for pe peels. Yes. Banana peels. Guys hitting 600 in his banana ball career. That's right. All right. Good start for your teammates here in the top of the fourth. As there's a lot of hubbaloo about Lance Necro in the locker room. Apparently this guy was... Somebody said he was hitting nukes in BP. That's the word on the street. But here's the thing. BP is BP. I personally think BP, if you hit line drives, you'll hit nukes in the game. But if you hit nukes in BP, you're going to swing and miss. Oh, there may be a nuke. 
Barrel to center. DR there. Backflips. Makes the snag. That's unfair. <laughs> That's unfair. He's that 14. Be half and out. He's 14 for 15 in his trick play attempts. You guys should see Indy Chavez. We need to get Indy Chavez for a fly bomb. He he literally throws his hands up. I don't know if you guys can I don't know how to describe this. He goes like this. Ball's coming at him. He goes like this. And the ball, he hits it, and it goes straight up there, and then he catches a bare hand and throws it in at the same time. So he goes like this. He'll go, he'll go like this. He'll go. Boop. Yeah, we're all in on that. We've had, we've had a, a version of that a couple times in banana ball, but not with but pageantry. It, 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 it does it, he does it, he waves his arms above his head, and he does it a second time, and he throws the ball. Well, that was... Come on, Luis. Good morning, good afternoon, good night for Luis Montanez, who fouled out to a fan his first time. He's having a bad night. But he's going to live his dream and play outfield barefoot, hopefully in the fifth inning. So I gotta leave in a little bit. Yeah, that's a fact. We'll uh, let you get back down there after. Uh, Are we in the fourth right now? Yeah, man, you're gonna have to boogie. Yeah, boogie loogie. See if Jason Romano can try and bring in Michael Morse over from first. We got two outs. Two down. Oh, there it is. A backflip catch and a K. Crowd the plate and get hit. It's just going to hurt a little bit, and we'll carry it first. Well, he was ready for the 2-0 offering. Romano bounced out to Cowboy Kyle on the bump his if first I, time. If I wasn't pitching the, the end, I would do that. Get up to bat. And ch just try to Roger Dorn it. Get up, get hit. Go, that's fair! That's oh, fair! Oh, Vincent Chapman calls it foul. We need another umpire down the line. You can't see it. You were shaking your booty. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think Vincent's heard that a few times from bananas and party animals alike on the tour. It's a tough job when you are moving it, grooving it, twerking it, working it, and you also have uh, the hardest duty. You know what the best thing is i got to say about the fans out here? It was raining for a good hour or two. I mean, uh, the only delay game only, what, what, 45 minutes or so? But An hour. Okay, an hour. 45 minutes or so. Yeah. But my whole point is, like, they were out here, you know, the, what, it opened up at 5.30. They literally were just dancing and grooving the whole time, and nobody really moved. You know, you, usually rain delays or, like, rain, you got people that go under Concord, this and that. No, they were like, yeah, we're going out here. We're going to get wet. That's a nasty front well, door it's a pleasure, bender. guys. I might have to go play. This Heath. is still the fourth, right? Yes, but okay, thank you. Good. Thank you so good much, man. Good seeing you guys. Good seeing you. Thank you, Heath. Hopefully be back in September in Savannah. See you guys. That's a fact. Best of luck to Heath Bell at shortstop and on the bump later tonight. And, and that is, that's what Banana Ball is all about, Josh. I mean, he just brings the energy. You can feel it here in the booth. You see it down on the mound. Just a guy you love having in Banana Land each and every time we get the MLBPAA. No, it is. It's an honor to have such an incredible personality and, and of course he's got the baseball resume to back it up as well. Heading to the bottom of the fourth inning, Nanner's up three points to zip. Still have an hour and 18 minutes remaining on our two hour time limit. We just have to finish eight innings within the two hours to start a ninth and every run in the last inning of the game counts as a point so teams are always in it we saw it last night the, banana, the, the, the bananas figured out beaks we're down four to one with two outs and then two run double rbi two base sprint walk off double see you later the bananas win the seven game series in florida four to three party animals have already won texas and still have a four-game lead in the season series. And that one was uh, as necessary as any game on the tour thus far for the boys in yellow. Yeah, I mean, it's we've seen some beautiful stuff as of late, and you can hardly say that the MLB PAA guys are out of this contest. I mean, that's the real beauty of Banana Ball. A big rally in the ninth inning could easily tie or win this game for those guys. It is going to be another one of the mountainous men Representing the former major leaguers taking over on the bump. Six foot five, 36 year old Colin Ballister. Who got a third of an inning of work back on March 11th. 
Gave up a two-base sprint. Malachi Mitchell went to steal third base. The throw from Kataris went into left. And just like that, the inning was walked off. Yeah, but we got a great 4-1-1 dance out of Colin Ballister, the Rasputin. And, you know, he was very surprised coming off of the mound, but we saw Malachi give the MLB PAA guys fits in the last contest. He had three runs scored and two stolen bases. By the way, he accounted for two of the Bananas' five walk-offs against the MLB PAA in Game 1. And did uh, two of those, both of them, as a pinch runner. You really don't see that very often in Banana Ball. 10-1-2 for the Nanners. Dalton Malden, the songbird of our generation. Well, his new hit single, Miss You, Love You, blasts throughout George M. Steinbrenner Field. He's quickly behind 0-2. On uh, the fourth round pick by the Montreal Ac Expos back in 2004, their final draft class. Right at Huntington Beach, California. Goes right after Malden and gets some swinging. And look at that fantastic celebration. Spider-like, boogieing off the bump. That was a beautiful bender for strike one to Dan Oberst. Stole first base, stole second. And came around to score in the first, that one knifed into one of the bullpens out there. Dan, a five-year banana, three collegiately, now year two as a pro. And he's plunked. That'll help his team leading 432 on base percentage as he fires a souvenir into the stands. Sure, there's a dent in that ball after it bounced off the man, the myth, the legend, Dan Oberst. Eric Jones giving the fans an opportunity to make a play and no such snag will be made. EJ popped out to Andrew Miller at first base. His first time up. Another opportunity for the fans. And now EJ on life number three in this at bat. Good bender from Ballister. Jones, who spent time in the minors for the Minnesota Twins and Seattle Mariners. Six homers tied for the tour lead with Jake Skoll of the Party Animals. And a guy who we saw hit a home run in game number one against the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association. It came off of Alex Wilson. Only one pitch thrown in the inning. Eric Jones demolished it over the fan wall. Made for one of the funnier mic'd up moments I've had in Four plus years here in Banana Land. Maceo Harrison, the Nanners dancing first base coach doing what he does. As Mike Vivasis behind the dish relieving George Kataris. Head coach of the party animals in his third tour. Secures the second strikeout of the frame for Ballister. And that's a rare one right there. It's only EJ's 10th. Check that 11th K in his 28th game played. Yeah, believe it or not, EJ with more strikeouts in his last five games than he had all of February and March. Baseball is a beautiful game. You really just never know. Now Michael Deeb. Pointing to the crowd, trying to find where the hot spots are out there. Oh, he has a blindfold on. This is news to me. This is this is a game of golden first banana, but make your way up the home plate. 
<laughs> he has finally found his way into the batter's box. I thought he might hit for it for a second. Pull a Cosimo Canella, who lined out to Jake Skoll in right field in Rick Woodfield in game 12 last year. Michael Deeb, used to barreling balls. That one fair down the right field line. Dan is racing around third. No, he's gonna get a stop sign from Heath Bell. Great play as he leaps out of the booth and stops Mr. Oberst in his tracks. Second double in as many nights for Deeb, who's got seven on the tour. Yet yeah, Deeb entering the series had only one extra base hit in the month of April. Now back-to-back -back doubles in games. That's great for the slugging percentage and OPS for Deeb. Dakota McFadden. Last two at-bats. A walk-off to win the game last night. A walk-off single to win the first inning this evening. He's up to eight on the tour. Tied with D.R. Meadows for the season high. This is a crucial A.B. for the Major League guys. They are trying to get through their first complete inning of the ball game. They only threw three and a third innings when they pitched through eight innings back on March 11th. It's because of the Bananas walk-offs. That one fouled down the third baseline. Wow. Check out the arm down there on Lance Necro. Good chuck across the diamond as Maceo does his infamous Miley Cyrus wrecking ball dance. Count even at two and two on the Bananas DH. Man at a Rocky Point, North Carolina. Through the left side. And that is three straight walk-offs in DMAC's last three at-bats. Four innings in the books. Four-nothing lead for the Bananas. And Dan Oberst in a one-handed tug-of-war battle with Dearman, Ziegler, the Invader, and Matt Malatesta. And Dan's going to pull that rope. All the way down the left field line. Didn't see that one coming. As we head to the fifth inning, what an honor this is. Three-time manager of the year, 1990 World Series champion with the Reds, and the man who managed the 2001 Mariners to 116 wins, the most ever in a season. Lou Pinella, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm enjoying uh, the ball game. It's a lot different than I'm used to, but I tell you, it's fun, quick, and the guys are really enjoyed in the dugout. Uh, love to hear that, Lou. Now, you've got four innings of banana ball in the books. What are your thoughts on this young sport? I'll tell you what. When I first started managing, Mr. Stein called me in his office, and he said, you know, baseball is a business, baseball is a sport. Baseball is entertainment, so go out and entertain. And that's exactly what the bana bananas are doing out here tonight. I'm seeing so much excitement at the ballpark. Oh, that is that is so cool to hear, Lou. And how uh, how wild is it to see this show going on in George M. Steinbrenner Field of all places? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, how crazy it is to see this crowd here in George M. Steinbrenner Field. Unbelievable, isn't it? It really is. Two, two sellouts in two nights. It's just fantastic. It goes to show you that if you put a good product on the field and the kids can have feel, the kids can have fun, the parents are going to bring them. So I salute the bananas for what they've done. They got a heck of a product and it's fun. It really is. Now, Sweet Lou, you were ejected 160 times throughout your 23 years of managing baseball. Any chance you'll be chucked tonight? Well, I, they've asked me. Everybody's asked me. <laughs> so I, I guess I guess if I get a chance about the seventh inning. Okay. Yeah. I love it. I'll get I'll get kicked out by the dancing umpire. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> All right, Lou Pinella, I cannot thank you enough for hopping on the microphone. Have a great rest of the night. Thank you very much. Nice talking to you. Likewise, Lou. There goes the legend, one of the greatest managers in the history of America's pastime, Lou Pinella. And uh, absolute chills to hear him enjoy Banana Ball so much. I mean, that was, that was pretty special. I mean, it speaks volumes about a guy... Lou, everywhere he went, was beloved by the fans, whether it was representing the New York Yankees, whether it was managing the Reds, the Mariners, the Cubs. He really found a way to connect with fans and become a beloved manager. Kevin Reese, the left fielder, pops it up. Fans unable to make a snag. Grounded out to second base on a trick play from Dalton Malden his first time. It's going to be 7, 8, 9 in the order. Remember, we hit 10 in Banana Ball. A designated hitter and an extra hitter. There is a difference. The DH works just the same as it does in Major League Baseball. The EH can be entered into the field at no cost. That one shanked towards the stands. A lot of chutzpah on it. Not snagged by a fan. Cowboy Kyle Lewigs out for his fifth inning of work. Gave up one in the first. Three goose eggs since then. And a cut and a miss on a nasty curveball. Bill Leroy tracking down Reese. He rolls it to first. <laughs> Just there in time. And that gives Kyle three consecutive strikeouts. I'll tell you what, his last full start, we're not going to count the start he had on Wednesday, but his last full start in Charleston, he had six strong innings, only allowed two earned runs. We're seeing a lot of the same effectiveness out there on the mound from Kyle once again. He quick pitches Andrew Miller. Welcome back to the art of hitting. Former Tar Heel bounced out to second his first time. And the heater, bottom of the zone, called strike three. And four straight Ks for Mr. Lewigs. this it's a wwe-esque moment dustin baber it's gonna be the second party animal inserted into the game for the mlb paa kicking his way up to the dish bill sets up inside kyle hits the spot wrong side of the keister of dustin baber And the count two and one on um, the party animals, second baseman for every game for them on the tour. All 24, you can lock them in there. It's their team leader with 24 trick plays and 25 tries. Comes in hitting 269, skies it to left. Deeb is there, gets rid of his glove, bare hands the ball. Michael Deeb, three for three on trick plays on the tour. And heaves that into the crowd. For the fourth straight frame, the Bananas just need one run to win the inning. And so happy to welcome Bryson, check that, Bronson Arroyo into the broadcast booth after starting tonight, two innings pitched. Uh, can you give me a review of your banana ball experience? Oh, it was absolutely fantastic to be out there to feel the crowd, you know, just to, to see the shenanigans going on, boy, that's where it's at, man. I played with some guys like Johnny Gomes and Eric Burns, as you guys know, these guys that, you know, they made it fun being out there, guys like Kevin Millar, and this is, uh, this is enjoyable. So has there been some discussion behind the scenes in 
and the uh, MLB alum alumni brethren about what uh, what the opportunity to play banana ball is like. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Jake Peavy introduced me to this like three years ago at Innings Festival, and he was like, man, banana ball is taking over the world, bro. And, and these guys are excited to get out there and to feel that kind of vibe. You know, I mean, no matter where you have played ball at whatever level, man, at some point you got to stop. And to feel the crowd, the electricity in the, in the ballpark tonight, amazing. Yeah, Peavy was the first guy on board all the way back on the One City World Tour in 2021. And, and you and Jake are the perfect guys for this because we're always looking for someone who can bring uh, another uh, item of entertainment. And, of course, you're a phenomenal musician. Uh, will we get any of your music here tonight? Oh, I think later in the game we might slide out there possibly. There's, a, there's some whispers about it. So we're going <laughs> to see if later in the game we can we can get that done. Oh, that is that is really cool to hear, Bronson. And, uh, you know, it was, it's been a long time for you getting out there on the, on the bump, especially when it comes to a full capacity crowd, over 10,000 here in George M. Steinbrenner Field. How did it feel to be uh, throwing in, in a meaningful ball game? Well, I, I think next time I want to play left field or second base. See, I thought I thought Roenick was crazy for playing second base, and now I'm thinking I should have played outfield because my arm did not like what was going on out there, that's for sure. Well, listen, if we had the radar gun going, I'm, I'm sure you were you were close to uh, in the prime <laughs> of your career with the Vila. Yeah, 67 to 72 is, I think, exactly where it was. Well, listen, Bill Lee, at 76 years old, touched 78 last year in Kansas City, so there's a lot of time left. As long as you can uh, throw more than your age, you're doing good. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. I saw Bill earlier today. I can't believe he's still out here performing, man. I mean, I'm I'm 46, and I can feel it. You know what I mean? Just not being in shape for him to be out here is remarkable. Yeah, it's it is so fantastic to have all you guys here in the spring training home of the New York Yankees, the 27-time World Series champs. Is your man Brett Tomko taking over on the bump? And even 100 wins across his career, spanning from '97 through 2011. And he will have five, six, seven for the Bananas. Meadows, Cox, and Olsen as DR swinging at the first pitch. Call in the infield. Renneke called off by Heath Bell. Inserted at shortstop. And uh, a line drive in the book for DR Meadows, who had the little chopper over your head for his first hit tonight. Yeah, that was, that was one ball I wish I had back. I think I could have got that one <laughs> if I was if I was uh, a little quicker on my feet. Well, yeah, at, at six foot three, not the tallest guy on your team, but uh, you you got a lot of length out there. Yeah, no doubt. You know, it's 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 a uh, it's a strange thing though when you haven't been on the bike for a while, man. It, it felt <laughs> it felt odd out there for sure. Now it's Ryan Cox, a single, his first time up. Now, Bronson, what does the music scene look like for you in the future? You bouncing around, got some shows on the docket? Yeah, you know, I just put out a record February 17th um, called Some Might Say, a bunch of original songs I wrote after I retired in 2018. This one, Sky to left, and Montagnez, barefooted, makes the grab. His dream coming true out there, moving back from short. So I, I just put that album out, and uh, yeah, we played some shows. We played a couple of innings festivals, which was in Arizona with, uh, with Eddie Vedder and a bunch of different bands, and here in Tampa with Dave Matthews was headlining that with Imagine Dragons. But, um, you know, we're getting out there and playing from time to time. I also play in a cover band in Cincinnati still. So, you know, the music is, is fun. You know, the energy you guys are feeling in the ballpark tonight is hard to duplicate in regular life. Jackson Olsen dunks it into right center. Meadows goes first to third. So to get to get up on the stage and, and, and be nervous about the fact that you've got to remember lyrics and, and remember chords and be in shape and have your voice in shape and how much can I jump around on the stage and still sing these songs, you know, it's a bunch of layers to it the same way it is as being a ball player. And, um, you know, in retirement, it's been fun to get up on the stage and have a buzz. Now, that is really cool to hear is Danny Hosley YMCAing his way up to the dish. I mean, the Innings Fest is, is such a unique event because it's the music world and the baseball world coming together, and uh, it's certainly something that's on the bucket list. Oh, yeah, it was, it was amazing this year to stand up on the stage and be playing these, these stories that I've written and, and also look over and see a guy like Tommy Hur, a childhood hero from the St. Louis Cardinals, you know, <laughs> teaching, teaching hitting in the background, you know, just a blend of those two worlds, like you said, is pretty, pretty special. Count three balls, no strikes on Hosley. Tomko, one bad one away from giving the Bananas a five-zip lead. DR at third, Jackson at first. And a line drive back up the middle. Hosley's going to do it himself. His eighth walk-off of the tour. 
Second best on the Nanners, tying DR. And it's 5 nothing Bananas. Bronson, I can't thank you enough for popping up on the broadcast, man. And I look forward for uh, your music later on this evening. I appreciate it. There goes Bronson Arroyo. And it is an ever-moving and evolving booth here. And what is the Yes Network booth? Pretty special to be able to call games where Michael K., David Cohn, Paul O'Neill and company do it in spring training. As Matt Wolf being rolled out in his rodeo clown barrel. Here comes the big dismount. Nailed it. Our trick pitching extraordinaire at a Joy, Oklahoma. A firefighter and EMS worker in Oklahoma City. Coming out to take over for Kyle Lewigs, who goes five innings of one run ball while striking out seven. Absolute honor to welcome in Dan Foster to the broadcast booth, the president of the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association. And uh, Dan, obviously, you are just about a, a bigger piece of putting this whole thing together as anyone. Uh, how did you get this done, man? My wife saw the Bananas play on television. She says, Dan, you got to call Jesse and you got to get this thing done. So I called Jesse and here we are. Ah, well, I can't thank you enough for picking up the phone and doing just that. This is yeah, the second of three games, uh, one here in Tampa, two in Savannah. The last will be on September 3rd. Uh, and, and can you just tell the people out there who may not know, like, what does the MLBPAA do out there? Our mission, and our president is Jim Tomey. I'm the CEO. Yes. Jim Tomey, our vice presidents are George Brett, Robin Yount, uh, guys like that on our board. That's a lot of Hall of Famers. Yeah, we got, we got them all. But our mission is to promote the sport of baseball, which tonight is a prime example of that. Raise money for charity. We've raised over $84 million for charity doing special events. And then uh, serve the unique needs of the former player. We have brought, we have licensing, personal appearances, endorsements, and pension and health care issues that we work on for the guys. Now, it's, it's an awesome organization, and what an uh, amazing thing we get to have you guys playing the bananas for the second time on the tour is Matt Joyce, the hometown kid, struck out for the second time tonight on the trickery from Matt Wolf. We go to the top of the order, Nick Swisher, a double and a run scored in the first, a one-base sprint in the third. And ahead 1-0. and oh. The switch hitting right fielder. So, Dan, what is it like for you recruiting these teams as uh, we have had terrific talent? Swisher, a big name added here for game two as he flies out to left. Not so fast. Michael Deeb tries to grab it behind the back. And Swishalicious is going to grab two bases on the first trick play missed on the tour by Vitamin Deeb. Well, believe it or not, we have over 20,000 members. So to, so we narrow it down. Let's say, all right, let's invite all the guys that are under the age of 40, except for Bronson, <laughs> that live in the area and start with that. Sure. And then we see, well, we don't have a second baseman, so we got to expand the search. But we've had lots of guys uh, say they're coming in, and for one reason or another, they cancel out on it. So it's been a revolving door to get a put a team out there certainly but george Kataris, he's been in both games he actually played for the bananas in peoria arizona as well he caught eric gagne the former cy young award winner in the largest banana ball game of all time as dr meadows makes the catch cartwheels out of it and that's going to be out number two nick swisher thought it was three dr bulls it to second there's three on uh, the rare 8-4 double play. That'll do it for your former major leaguers in the top of the sixth. The Andrews just need one run to walk off the inning like they've done five times already tonight. Uh, Dan, I can't thank you enough for popping on the broadcast and, and sharing your knowledge and, and putting this whole thing together. You're welcome. Thank you. Yep. 
from Dan Foster. We now take this thing into the bottom of the sixth inning. We've got a soccer mom race going on here. So all these moms have three kids lined up on first, second, and third respectively. They've got to pick them all up and win the race to home plate. It's a tight one getting to second. Neck and neck going to third. The kids are starting to sag here. We have one mob, slowly but surely, making it from third to home. Her opponent behind her is struggling to get all three kids as we have a collapse about 45 feet of the way. They're all trying to hop back on. We need some teamwork as our other mom dragging the children, trying to complete the race. Don't call it a comeback. Our kid in the back is kind of walking, now dragging, but we're gonna count it. I don't know if I'd be able to complete this 360 foot race. Grabbing one kid each leg of the way. And for the first time on the tour, neither mom able to make it the whole way, but incredible effort from both contestants as well as the kids involved. Biko Scala, Josh Tulevsky, now joined by the legend of Banana Land. The man who put us on the map <laughs> on the One City World Tour, the pride of Mobile, Alabama, Cy Young Award winner, two-time World Series champ, MLB Network analyst, Mr. Jake Peavy. Biko, what an introduction, man. Thank you so much. What a night here in Tampa, Florida. Huh? We got your buddy Brian Tolberg getting loose on the bump. As you can see, four seasons with the San Diego Padres. And uh, a pretty incredible fact about him. So you see it right there at the bottom of his graphic that disappears. He's the first Frontier League player to ever make Major League Baseball. And because of that, the award for the best pitcher in the Frontier League every year is the Brian Tolberg Most Valuable Pitcher Award. Yeah, great story, Biko. When I got to the big leagues, Brian Tolberg had already made it, but I certainly knew that story. And just this inspiration to never give up. You, you have to fight through adversity in baseball, and Brian Tolberg did that, pitched for a good while in San Diego. Let's see what he's got tonight. And he's one of the rare guys. His first week in Major League Baseball, he was named National League Player of the Week. He went 2-0 and in 14 and a third innings pitched. And look, I don't know if he ever threw a ball much over 90 miles an hour, too, and that shows that command is everything. If you're pitching, if you're a young pitcher and you're listening, don't worry about velocity. Worry about where you're throwing that baseball. It's the pride of Tampa, Florida, at 50 years old. Told me before the game he's going to throw 95% sliders. <laughs> Chance for a fan to make a play on the Bill Leroy foul ball. But another life for the Bananas backstop. It's going to be 9-10-1 for the boys in yellow. Here in the bottom of the sixth, who have walked off all five innings so far tonight. Our brother Kyle threw outstanding. He's still going, but he is outstanding tonight. And yeah, that's going to be a five-pitch sprint. Bill gets the wave around first from the Red Sox Hall of Famer Bill Lee. And a two-base sprint for Mr. Leroy, who robs the last leg of it there. O for O had a two base sprint for a walk off back in the third and Alex Ziegler balancing the bat on his chin coming up to the dish is going to whip out every bat trick known to man in the walk from the first base dugout to the ready batter's box the machinist from Butler Pennsylvania Another TikTok superstar, over 600,000 followers in his second tour. 
And trying to pick up his second career walk-off for the Nanners. Went four for 10 last year. Malachi Mitchell pinch runs for Leroy at second. Now, PV, you shared the locker room with Tolberg in 02 and 03. What, what kind of a presence was he there as that one fair down the third baseline? And it's going to be one base for Malachi as Ziggy has his first hit of the tour. Do it, Ziggy. Yeah, Tolberg was a great guy. When you get to the big leagues when you're young as I was, you don't really speak too much. You watch the older guys and you watch guys who are having success. Brian Tolberg, you just said it, was National League Pitcher of the Week or the Month right out of the shoot, having success really with the command of the baseball. And that's what I learned from Brian the most is, look, you don't – I was a young kid trying to see how hard I could throw. And 95 was everything. Brian Tolberg was throwing 88 and having lots of success. So I, I learned tons from older guys like Brian, like Brian Lawrence was out there, Woody Williams. and oh. There's that breaking ball he's talking about throwing there. White Castle special. Nice slider from Tolberg. Seeing those old school Padre uniforms though brings back some good memories. Uh, it's a, it's a, there's something about it. The nostalgia, I mean, it is beautiful. Think of those battles with the Yankees and the World Series at the end of the 90s. Of course, the Yankees were successful in both battles, but... You're talking about some big shoes to fill. Me and Brian Tolberg and guys like that were trying to replace Kevin Browns of the world. Oh, my gosh. Nice play over there at third base by Lance Necro. Takes out Oberst, who had been plunked and stole first base. I tell you what, I got to give mad props to the Tampa fans today. Obviously, with the rain delay, you're a little concerned of how things will go. Things couldn't have went any better. I've never stood in the rain and signed autographs. I've never seen a stadium <laughs> stay completely full. People not moving and giving up their seats and just being troopers. Jesse and, and the entire staff just did an incredible job and look turns into a glorious night. Tons of energy here at Steinbrenner Field. Any cool fan interactions so far on the night, Jake? Oh, it's been incredible. Look, I've had a great I I time all day just being in the locker room with some of the, the I, look, the Bananas are my new team, my new family. <laughs> when I show up around here, it's like, uh, you know, big brother coming home, so I get lots of hugs and catch <laughs> up right. with all the guys. But getting to go on the other side and it'd be a lot of former major leaguer and catch up with Swish and Andrew Miller and, and uh, Mike Morse. You know, I got a World Series ring in my pocket that I've been showing off the kids all night. That guy Mike Morris down there got the game winning hit in game seven on the road in Kansas City so all those memories come flooding back but when you talk about fans in the experience it's oh no Eric Jones a behemoth blast to left it leaves George M. Steinbrenner field a three run a sixth inning walk off tater tot his tour leading seventh blast and the Nanners up six to nine Nothing. I mean, Eric Jones has had a sort of slow April, but my goodness, getting a double in the ninth inning of the last game, now a home run tonight. That's going to extend the hitting streak he's had on the season. It's now up to six games. Yeah, Mr. Jones and me, he's coming in on big <laughs> energy off the Seattle run that they had last year. I don't know how many know, I'm sure that you do, that he was a bullpen catcher, a part of that big energy. What's better than to bring that right to Banana Land and continuing on? Well, it's amazing about EJ is the turnaround for the Mariners coincides literally <laughs> directly to the day he was hired. That is exactly right. No, exactly right. We, we talked for a good while tonight and um, I, we sat and had, had lunch and we were talking about that Mariner run and how unbelievable an experience it was for a, a kid straight out of playing to go catch Luis Castillo to be a part of the, the playoff run going against Toronto and winning. And like I said, when you're bringing talent like that right out of the big leagues um, onto the field of Banana Land. It speaks for the talent that, that's here in, in Banana Land. Oh my gosh. Robbie Ray, Logan Gilbert, uh, one of the best bullpens. Eric, right. will, Eric will tell you the best bullpen Munoz. in baseball last year. Oh my goodness. Paul Seawald uh, and then uh, a legend like Sergio Romo who EJ said on every single pitch, which was hundreds of pitches that he threw to him, asked how it moved. Was it better than the last? I mean, uh, pretty cool to hear how much of a, of a perfectionist that World Series champion. Well, is. and he's bringing those experiences. 
like you said, all those names, he caught those guys last year. He spent time watching those guys work. You don't think he's bringing that right to these guys and these athletes here and sharing that knowledge. So it's a it's a win win for everybody. And I know this, he's having the time of his life getting to play again. Now, Jake, we, we've said it a few times, but you were the first former major leaguer to hop on the bananas bandwagon, welcomed us with open arms when we came to Hank Aaron Stadium on the experiment that was the one city world tour back in 2021. Uh, obviously, you saw the magic that is banana ball and, and the organization in the game. Um, but did you ever imagine that two years later, it was going to be a 33 city tour across 20 states with 87 games? You know what? I can't uh, I can't say that I saw this coming, but I did see something special in, in the banana's future from the first time I was a part of it. The first conversation that I had on the phone with Jesse and us talking about coming over to Mobile, you could hear the passion. And, and when you feel that somebody is honest and they're really behind their product, you want to get behind it. And then the trip to Mobile, the One City World Tour, ultra special from that night on. My little nephew didn't play baseball. He had given up baseball to play golf. After that night, he hasn't wanted to stop playing baseball on a daily basis. So, oh my gosh. That along with just a great energy. <laughs> we've, got, we've got Dakota Stiltz all Britain on the mound. All 10 feet 9 inches of him. And I hope Mike's alright. Yeah. Looks banged up. <laughs> he tags Michael Morse on the tush. <laughs> and he's going to be Aided to first base. Look, and that guy right there we just spoke of has played in the biggest baseball games in the world. <laughs> and he just got carried to first base in good baseball humor fun after being hit by a pitch. That's awesome. I don't care who you are. He's getting carried. He's got two singles and two bat flips. <laughs> That's right. Look, he got to bring some of his small children. I get to meet some of those for the first time today. And they were super excited to see their daddy play that they didn't get the opportunity to. Good work by... Baber, Bloomer, Skoll, and Acuff on the assist with Mike Morse. The 12 year, check that, 13 year major leaguer. And now we have Bronson Arroyo coaching third base, playing the guitar with Lance Negro at the dish. Let's listen in. Oh, yeah, I want it all. I want to be that guy. I want to kiss your eyes. I want to drink that smile, make you feel like hey, so on fire. I want to stay in my bed all night. Yeah, you got me singing like. Bronson blasts away on the guitar, shares his incredible singing voice with a full capacity George M. Steinbrenner field. Schnazzy play by Danny Hosley. Out in right field is the entire Bananas team now rocking the shiver dance to get in their ready position. It's always something. In uniform, Bronson Arroyo, I can't tell you how many nights we sat around hotel rooms and different places getting to play music. Seeing him get to play in his uniform on the field during a game is amazing. <laughs> and look, Bronson Arroyo, too. I'm sure you guys just talked about it. Got an album out, just wrote an album. A crazy talented musician and chasing a, a different passion. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly gets tagged by the foul ball off the bat of Luis Montañez, the shortstop. Has fouled out to a fan and struck out swinging. In his second banana ball game. Facing stilts for the first time. Once again, peppering it in Arroyo's direction. Showing the athleticism there. And he said that during a concert, he, he tries to move about on the stage a decent amount. Oh, absolutely. We just left Boston last weekend, and we got the chance to share a stage and play lots of music. We were just down here a few months ago in Innings Festival. Both played and brought bands down here and had a, a great time. Anytime you get to tie music and baseball in, where do you sign me up? Line drive, base knock. Luis, two for six in his banana ball career. So two men on, one away. Can you imagine? I want everybody listening to imagine standing out there on that mound on those stilts trying to do what Dakota is doing right now. They're five feet high. Incredible. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. There was times I fell down just on my own two feet out there trying <laughs> to do it. 
One one count on Jason Romano. I mean, you've been around here a couple times. Have you ever had the chance to talk to Stilts about the mechanics out there on the mound? Well, you know, we, we, I just talk about how much I'm in, in love with his athleticism and being able to do it. I tell you. Olsen great. steps on third, gets the double play over at first base, and just like that, Stilts out of the inning. Look at that, double play. Pitcher's best friend and <laughs> doing the gritty. Yeah, look at him. The man is impressive. I think the gritty is uh, maybe even more impressive than being able to deal out there on the bump. When Dakota wants to talk to me, we talk pitching for just a little bit, and then he wants to talk bass fishing. <laughs> Dakota loves the, that bass fishing and uh, wants to show me pictures, and one of my better friends on the team is Mr. Stilts. Yeah, that's the pride of Ellaville, Georgia right there. He's as country as they come. Got the Stilts from his grandma when he was eight years old, and Boy, what a sensation he's turned into. And this is now Chill City in George M. Steinbrenner Field. Over 10,000 fans lighting up the night. This is, uh, this is pretty powerful right here. talk about music and baseball and how they go hand in hand this is none more of a perfect example of that when you come to a ballpark the music that the ballpark plays whether it's an organ or it's through the speakers it, we love the way that makes us feel and it adds certainly so much to the experience and of course this is deep here our own version of a seventh inning stretch the lyrics from Coldplay just make so much sense we're all yellow Banana Ball is here to bring joy to the masses, to have fun playing America's pastime, and in my opinion, the greatest game in the world. And back-to-back -back nights here in George M. Steinbrenner Field. This has been a stupendous sight. We weren't turning ballparks yellow when we visited Hank Aaron Stadium back in 2021. That was an invention of last year's tour. And you see, yeah, you see that, these, that it never stops. The creative minds never stop flowing. And then you watch the way they were able to get through a pregame rain delay. There was creative thoughts and, and brand new ideas turning into reality on the spot. Stilts has now thrown five and a third innings, only allowed two runs. The RA back below four, which in banana ball, the, uh, the conversion rate to baseball, that's like a sub two ERA. <laughs> I mean, you know from experience, it is tough to pitch when ball four is two bases and, and sending guys home from second and third automatically. I just told Bronson was feeling a little down about his outing. I said, Bronson, don't worry, bud. I haven't put up a zero yet either. <laughs> Those walks. And, and look, again, I've said it multiple times, the talent level on both sides. When you look and watch these party animals play and you watch the Savannah Bananas play, you're watching high caliber baseball. Luke Gregerson, the new man on the mound. And... We welcome in Andrew Miller, mic'd up. How's it going, guys? In, in the dugout. How you living, Andrew? Uh, right now, the scoreboard's pretty ugly, but, I, you know, look at the, the fans in this crowd and, you know, just the excitement all around. I'm pretty blown away. Drew, it's Peeve up here in the booth, buddy. What's going on, Peeve? How's, How that, how's that body feel? And tell me about those ABs, man. My shoulder's killing. That's why I'm not on the mound. <laughs> I wish I was out there. I'm watching my buddy uh, Luke Gregerson pitch right now. He's still got it. Uh, almost blew a hammy trying to beat that ground ball out to first, but you know what? It's all worth it. Man, seeing you out here with your kids, I and I was telling Biko and the whole staff, seeing all of you guys come along and get to enjoy and just get to – who doesn't love fun? And have you ever
never had this much fun out of the baseball field. I can't say I have. And you know what? <laughs> getting to play catch in the outfield with my son and, and getting to see them smile and getting to see them, you know, just watch this nonstop entertainment is just it, it's it's baseball at its finest. That's the truth. It's really cool to hear is Michael Deeb fouls off a payoff from Luke Gregerson, the 11 year MLB vet, 2017 World Series champion, and your teammate on the 2017 World Baseball Class Classic Championship team for the USA. Yeah, don't leave that out. That's important. Gold medal champion. I mean, what what is that experience like, Andrew? <laughs> you know, it was a blast. We were the first uh, American team to win it, but just what a fun team. It's like being an all-star team. You're in, in awe of all the guys around you all the time, and just, uh, you know, the fact we were able to win, some of the plays were made. Adam Jones made a catch that I'll never forget, uh, but just a, a really awesome way to spend a spring training and, and getting to put your, uh, your country on your jersey is pretty hard to beat. It's going to be a one-base sprint for Deeb. He is the inning-winning run. We've heard a lot of that today. <laughs> That's what gets me every time out there, Miller. If you don't throw strikes, the walk kills you. In, the, in banana ball, the walk kills you. Look at that. I mean, the guy just took a Gregerson sinker the other way. That's uh... <laughs> That's not easy to do, I can tell you that. No, that's true. Look, I played with Luke early in my career. He came up with the Padres and, and, and started a dominant uh, run in the major leagues, sinker, slider. One of the most underrated relievers for probably a 10-year stretch. He threw as much as anybody and was as good as anybody. That's a soft tapper to the left side. Grayson Bloomer at shortstop. Really nice play by the 2021 and 22 Collegiate Banana, back-to-back -back CPL champ. As Deep goes to third, D-Mac up to second, who's three for three on the night with two walk-offs. And now, now Ryan Cox, one for two, will try his luck. Uh, good, good play by Swish, too. Give him credit. Swish came ready to play. Yeah, that was a slick sliding snag in right. And Swisher, one for two on the ball game. On base two out of three times. Made a couple nice throws from the outfield as well. Oh, that's a fact. Saved a run. All right, you guys have the infield in. The party animals, now three, check that, four of your nine fielders. What's it look like in the dugout? Are, are guys dropping like flies? <laughs> I think there's some tight hammies, but no, everybody's having a good time. Uh, I think we need some quicker legs out there. Uh, maybe some guys better at field and infield fly balls. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, what was it like to go and navigate that pop-up hit you at first base early in this ball game? Well, uh, we got a big punch out right there. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, a little bit of respect all the first base when I've had in my uh, career, but that wind is blowing. That storm that came through, it's blowing straight out to left, and uh, I can't believe I caught it, and I feel better every time watching one drop that I was able to get a glove on it. It was, it was a heck of a recovery, man. <laughs> Well, we saw it a few innings later not go that way um, for your replacement. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's a tough play. And uh, one of PD and I's teammates, one of my favorites, Dustin Bedroya, used to yell at pitchers to get out of the way. He's a little <laughs> more colorful. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. Jackson Olsen serves it fair down the third baseline. And that is seven walk-offs on the night for the Nanners, who lead by seven points. Andrew, I can't tell you how much we appreciate you slapping a mic on and uh, enjoying the young sport of banana ball with us tonight. Hey, this, this sport's going to stick around for a while the way it is. You guys got an awesome product. I love it. Next time we see you, any chance you're out on the bump? <laughs> I don't know. I think my shoulder's shot. I'll try. I'll keep working on it. No chance, Jesus, me and you. <laughs> yeah. You're coming in relieving me like old times. Hey, just like the old days. I'd love to do it. <laughs> Hey, thanks again. Uh, we really love seeing you play first and hit. It's, I mean, what a magical experience. Where else in uh, the sport of baseball do you get to see Andrew Miller holding down first base and swinging the lumber? Absolutely. Well, thank you guys very much. We appreciate it. Hey, Suze, thank you. Have a great rest of the evening. All right. See you guys. There goes Andrew Miller as we salute all the service members in the military, past and present, here in George M. Steinbrenner Field. Of course, Pico Scala, Josh Tulevsky, Jake Peavy, and the rest of our Bananas TV crew pass that on to everybody watching on YouTube. Can't thank you for taking time out on a Saturday night. Ball game delayed by an hour because of Mother Nature. 
But the second of three battles between the Bananas and the MLB PAA. And so far, it has been all yellow. Although, remember, every run in the last inning counts as a point. So your guys aren't out yet, PV. Yeah, and, and look, they, they've got kind of the weaker links out and some of the, <laughs> the, the party animals who are, you know, should be a little bit more up to speed. I, you know, you talk to a lot of these former players, and you still have it in you. You want to come out here and compete. But if you haven't been doing it, you haven't been working, you see, you can't just jump back in at this level and, and do what you once did. So what was the wisdom? Them you were trying to impart on some of the MLB guys who were coming up with questions. Well, I, I just told them that they're, you're just not ready for the. If you watch what's happening in Major League Baseball this year with the rule changes and you're seeing how the pace of play, the thing we love about banana ball is action, pace of play, and moving along. These older guys, they're not used to that. I promise <laughs> you. That, I was getting them ready to look. When, once this ball gets put in play, it, it's going. There's no stepping out. You saw a few times tonight that's got a few guys. But I just told them to go out there and have fun. I mean, this is what this is about. This is entertainment. It's fun. It's about our great pastime. It, and it's just good energy. I said, just soak it in. And, and uh, it, the best thing about it is there's not much asked of you. You know, when I was first asked to come out and join Banana Land and, and see what it was about, I was just asked to come be a part and, and, and see it and touch it and feel it for the first time. I've been hook, line, and sinker ever since. Mr. Electric, Christian Deerman, one of the more entertaining pitchers this side of the Mississippi, comes in to relieve stilts. It's going to be 8, 9, 10 for the former major leaguers, Kevin Reese. Will lead it off. A ground out and a strikeout today, and he takes a four-pitch ball for sprint. Racing around first. He's going to test the banana sprint defense, and it was a good idea. Michael Deeb, the sixth. Danny Hosley, the seventh and final fielder who had to grab it before it's live. And heads up base running there for the New York Yankees vice president of player development. And now we have a pinch hit opportunity from Jake Skull. 15th overall draft pick back in 2010 by the Texas Rangers. Spent five years in their organization before getting traded to the Yankees. Two with the Bronx Bombers. Played a whole lot of games here in George M. Steinbrenner Field between spring training and playing for then the then Tampa Yankees, now Tampa Tarpons, single-A affiliate. Yeah, wouldn't you know it, but Jake Skull sharing the same spring training home as Andrew Miller back in 2016. How about that? Yeah, Skull is, uh, is bumping shoulders with Alex Rodriguez, Mark Teixeira, whole host of former legendary Yankees, including Nick Swisher, who came over and when he joined up with the squad, Skull said he still had uh, with the hair down on the neck, he had a beard going, and they're like, Swish, you're a legend. <laughs> but he, we got to clean that up, man. Was, he said, oh, yeah, 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 all right. All right. <laughs> Swish brings big energy <laughs> anywhere he comes. Reese over to third base on the ground out. Dustin Baber gets his second A-B of the night. Flew out to left last time. The Florida native. Shallow pop into center, sliding unsuccessfully is D.R. Meadows. And Reese will score. The second run of the night for the MLB PAA. You guys are in position to possibly snag a point here in the eighth. And now we take a look at DR out in center. Looks like they're going to try and revive his glove. Yeah, the glove's okay. He's wondering what's going on. A couple times tonight he's been unsuccessful at diving plays. Yeah, those dang gloves. Sometimes they don't cooperate. But I tell you, it's just good baseball. You get Reese on right there. Jake did a nice job in moving him over to third base with less than one out. You put the ball in play. Some life in that MLB alumni dugout over there. Now Matt Joyce. Pops it towards our booth. And it's a ricochet, so no chance for a fan to make a play. Well, kids and 
elderly gentlemen alike racing for the ball. Good to see <laughs> our young man come away with it. And great effort from uh, our elderly chap who's hopping over seats, firing his eyes, looking for a souvenir. That little kid never leaves us, Biko. Never leaves us. Joyce with a couple strikeouts tonight was the first guy to strike out when stepping out of the box for the third strike of an AB on the tour. It was great seeing Matt get a, a warm reception down here in Florida. Another one right back oh. in our general vicinity. And Matt's still up there. No catch made by a fan. But more kids fired up to grab a ball. Wild pitch. Joyce concerned that Vincent Chapman was going to strike him out again because he had to jump out of the box to avoid the pitch. But incidental movement out of the box is covered. It's just when you obviously are uh, thinking in baseball terms when the strikes get called. That's happening at all levels this year. Reggie Liggins, the base umpire, couldn't be in a worse spot. Instead of seeing the strike zone, we just see his tukis. As Joyce out in front of that one. Into foul territory again. No catch by a fan. This is what Matt Joyce did to me so many times. Late in my career, I was with Boston facing Matt Joyce a lot and with that same Tampa Bay uniform. Good at bat. You couldn't quite put him away. You had a, your chances, and he's a battler. Goes down swinging on the payoff pitch. <laughs> and Christian Deerman, some kind of unique breakdancing celebration. And here's Jesse Cole. Major League All-Star, World Series pitcher, Red Sox Hall of Famer, 76 years young. Please welcome Bill, the Spaceman, Lee. Mr. Electric gets two outs, gives up a run, and now relies on the 10-year Red Sox vet. Hall of Famer in Boston. Four years with the Montreal Expos. 1973 All-Star and the starter for the Sox in games two and seven of the 75 World Series against the Big Red Machine. I just said it when we're watching the older fellas chase the foul balls. That little kid within us never leaves. This man, Bill, the Spaceman Lee, is a living example of that. Getting to hug his neck and catch up with him today. He's coming in from out in the Pioneer League, doing appearances out there, yes. pitching out there, and then right. coming here <laughs> at his age is truly remarkable. And then watch him go out there and compete. He's still the most competitive member of the Bananas for my money. I mean, he gives up a home run, and he's still of that old school belief. I'm going to hit the next batter <laughs> in that batter's box. Oh, he was talking to me about his Pioneer League experience. He was talking to me about his outings and if they won and lost, the, the, the true competition of it. And um, look, it's incredible to see him sticking around. We were just in Boston. People know that I'm affiliated with the Bananas and I'm obviously affiliated with the Red Sox. They know that Bill the Spaceman Lee is affiliated with the Bananas and I heard that time and time again. Hey, I love that you and Bill are with the Bananas. So a lot of fun. And what a Red Sox-Yankees battle here. Swisher, too much launch angle on that out to left. Michael Deeb, one for two on the night in trick plays. Just trying to secure an out for the Spaceman. As the Harry Nelson song, written about the man on the bump, blares through the ballpark. Bill gets the job done. He now has a full six innings on the tour. And an even nine ERA as Heath Bell, with the assistance of a handful of party animals, chugging it in, and there's the signature power slide. Talk about a legendary Padre. Absolutely. Heath Bell's coming out party was in 2007. We had to play game 163 against the Colorado Rockies, who had won 16-17 or something like that in a row. And we played a 14-inning game. Heath Bell came in that game through two innings and extra innings with our season on the line and just had a coming out party of I'm here and I'm ready to stay. And from that moment on, he had some electric years in San Diego, all-star closer. You're talking about taking Trevor Hoffman's spot in San Diego and, and doing that is not easy. Heath Bell did it and did it very, very well. A great 
fun-loving guy. He's meant for banana ball. And do you think do you think there are lessons that he picked up from Trevor Hoffman before inheriting that closer's position? Without question. Anybody who sat down there with I was a starting pitcher, and I learned more than, than I learned probably from anybody in my career you know, from Trevor Hoffman. Those guys who sat with him on a nightly basis and turned in performances like Heath Bell certainly had his fingerprints all over it. And now one more question for you. Did, did Matt Holliday really touch home plate in that game? <laughs> man, you got to no. go there. Look, I, that was... <laughs> Oh, man. No, he did not. If, if we'd have had replay, I, we, but we'd have kept playing that game. It's a double play, and we'd have kept playing a, a even more epic game. But that was a certainly um, – that was a tough night, watching my best buddy Trevor Hoffman blow a two-run save in the 14th inning for our season to be over. I had my best year as a professional ready to go in the playoffs. Chris Young was also on that team. So we felt like for the first time in a few years, we'd made the playoffs in 05 and 06. But 07, we really thought we were poised and ready to make a run. It ended that night in Colorado, and it was a long flight back to San Diego. A yeah. quiet one, too. Yeah, no, that is uh, It's one of the wilder moments in the 21st century of baseball. What a battle. Well, I think that play kind of forged uh, replay into our game, one of the defining moments that got replay to where it is today in baseball. Look at that. Heath Bell with the theatrics coming out on the mound. And speaking of theatrics, we welcome into the broadcast... Hey, we got a guy. Hey, we got a guy. Not boss falling. Not boss falling. Oh, no. No communication between Bloomer and Baber. Let it drop. And Party Animals lost the homer in an elevator shaft there. Uh, Nick Swisher, New York Yankees legend, 2009 World Series champ, 2010 All-Star. Thanks so much for getting mic'd up, man. You got me out there, Swishalicious. Negative, but we've got Nick. Mike the wrong guy. <laughs> we miked the wrong guy. Who has the mic? <laughs> Who has the mic on? Euler. <laughs> It's time for everybody's favorite game show. Who has that mic? <laughs> well, uh, it's a mystery. We may uh, never dis discover the, the solution to. It's like the sinking of the Lusitania. It almost sounded like it was Heath Bell. If I had to guess, I thought it was Heath Bell had the mic. But Let's listen in one more time. Oh, it's off. So there's no listening to be had. <laughs> Do it, boys. Uh, hot shot to second. Baber to Bloomer. Over to first base. And that is a schnazzy 4-6-3 double play. Exactly what Heath needed. Yeah, Heath, if you're watching mechanically, watch how short Heath Bell's stride is. He gets that foot down and really gets out over the front half. Throws the ball down in the strike zone so well. <laughs> Getting the foot down with a little pause right there. <laughs> to the top of the order we go. Danny Oberst. Steal a first base, a hit by a pitch, and a ground out. Heath, the 69th round draft pick by the Tampa Bay Devilries in 97. Didn't get to the bigs until 2004 is that one. Shot down the right field line. Dan Oberst walks off the eighth inning. Manners win it two to one. And are up by eight points. That is a mammoth blast from Dan Obers. Believe it or not, his last two home runs have both gone the opposite way. One over that big wall in Grayson Stadium, and now to the short porch here in George M. Steinbrenner Field. Fourth long ball of the tour for the St. Pete kid. And what a homecoming. Yeah. Said he's got... A decent amount more than 60 friends and family in the stands and putting on a show for him. Here's the young professor. To the scoreboard right now, it is Savannah Bananas 8, Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association 0. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is the ninth and final inning. And in the game of banana ball, every run counts for a point. Never mind what that score says up there. Every one of these men in that dugout has been to the show. Some of them are World Series champions. Anything can happen in this game. That's why we love it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final inning. The young professor said it best. Anything is possible. 
And Peavy, it's going to have to be the greatest rally in banana ball history if your teammates are going to pull this one out. Well, your uh, fellow former major leaguers, you're donned in bananas yeah. yellow tonight. That's exactly right. Look, I, I uh, do have some former teammates on my uh, radar down there, but I am a banana, active banana. I'm getting ready, <laughs> coming off this DL, and can't wait to be back in Birmingham and pitch. But you're right. These guys, they know the game of baseball. Here's what you're trying to do. You're taking till you get a strike when you're down the this late in the ball game. You're putting those base runners on. When you're down late, take it to that pitcher, proves that he's going to throw strikes. If he's going to give us a couple free passes, get us some, some good counts, you put base runners on until you get that tie and run up there and take a swing at it. Yeah, and if the party animals have had time to discuss uh, some strategy with the MLB PAA guys going into this inning, really the scouting report with Matt Malatesta, who's on the mound here for the Bananas, walks have been a little bit of an issue for him, so it would be wise for them to take a couple pitches and see what Matt's command looks like in this ballgame. That's exactly right. I would imagine they were going to do that. Malatesta, 2021 Collegiate Banana. The infamous three scoreless innings of relief in the decisive game three against the Moorhead City Marlins. The splitter specialist on his second world tour. Started off rough. The overall numbers you see there on the graphic, nothing to write home to Ma and Pa about, but five straight outings without allowing a run, only one hit given up across those five trips to the mound. And he's lowered the MPI down quite a bit. He's averaged around a three minute and 30 second MPI here in the month of April. The Heath Bell jerseys remain on the mound. Hopefully a good luck charm for the former major leaguers. It's 2-3-4 in the lineup. George Kataris, Mike Morse, and Lance Necro are gonna try and get this rally going. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good night. They're going to have to do it with just two outs left. I tell you what, that was some really good off-speed pitches there. Get ahead with the fastball, expand with the off-speed. Pitching clinic. Malatesta, throw a decent amount of heaters, but he makes his bacon on the splitter and even dabbles with a fork ball from time to time. And when he's on, I've talked to... Well over, I'd say dozens of, of hitters who have faced him. It's a really uncomfortable at bat. He doesn't really know where the splitter is going to go. It just throws it right down the middle and sees what happens. Breaks all over the place, as you see right there, down below the zone. When the split is properly executed, it is the best pitch, in my opinion, in baseball because there's just not any way for you visually to see anything but fastball out of the hand. Mike Morris was trying to get all eight points back on that last swing. Now he bounces it to Ryan Cox between the legs. That is the 100th trick play of the tour for the Savannah Bananas. And who else but their leader, the glove magician, is now 42 for 43. I mean, what an impressive feat, not only for Cox to be 42 for 43, but that means the Bananas would have averaged around three and a half trick plays per game to this point to get to that mark. Just outstanding that they that consistent with the trickery. Lance Necro, the third baseman. It's going to have to start the eight-point rally now. It's lofted to shallow center. DR coming in. Michael D, but no one can get to it. And that's step one of seven when it comes to trying to bring the tying run up to the dish. That was a good pitch right there. Had Necro out in front, just in no man's land. Little Bermuda Triangle action in left center. The baton pass to Luis Matanez. Shortstop one for three. Two for six in his banana ball career. Popped in the infield behind the dish. Bill Leroy getting after it. Into the stands. Not caught by a fan. Has a fan caught the last out of the game? Not yet. We're waiting on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. One, one. Peter out of the zone. And a 3-1 count on the 41-year-old out of Bayamón, Puerto Rico. 
Former major leaguers down to their final strike. And he's plunked. Just what the MLB PAA needed. Take it any way you can get it. That's two out of seven guys on. Now we see what Jason Romano can do. Go for three on the night. Soft tapper, swinging bunt. Malatesta gathers, throws to first, plenty of time. And that'll do it. This ties the biggest blowout in banana ball history, which funny enough, occurred three nights ago in Grayson Stadium with the party animals defeating the bananas nine to one. Jake Peavy, I cannot thank you enough for coming up here, spending a bunch of innings in the booth. It's always a pleasure, man. Buddy, I had a blast. And look, I want to take my hat off, tip of the cap to the bananas pitchers tonight. Kyle, Mr. Dearman. Bill Lee. These are major league players over there. Yes, they're not in, in great shape, but they didn't really have a chance tonight because of the execution of banana pitchers, and then you saw the walk-off. So, great night, and look, it's always a pleasure being in banana land. The energy is unmatched. You guys are the best. Josh Biko, thank you, pal. Uh, thank, thank you, you much. Yeah, those, uh, those pitchers have been learning a lot from you, big dog. Oh, look, I've had a blast. There goes Mr. Peavy to go down and party with the guys. Yeah. And here's Jesse Cole. And for all the MLB alumni to be with us, the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association, thank you to them. Fans, we thought we'd have one more surprise for you. So how about we light up the sky here in Tampa? Thank you all so much. Let's light them up. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Have a great night. Take the broadcast. Light up the sky above George M. Steinbrenner Field. Red to start with some copper in the background. Like sparks flying when you slam metal on metal. The red out in front. Classic 4th of July sparkler variety. Nice two color mix to get us going. Good speed as we support it with some green and gold. Shout out Michael Deeb and his Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Well, those things shooting up like fish trailing from the bottom of the sea. A sea lion traversing the waters behind them right on their tail. But those puppies leaving a stream of dust behind them. Shooting up and turning into, uh, kind of into the hair on Peanut, the ventriloquist doll, uh, a dummy of Jeff Dunham. Now some yellow, pink and yellow. Both colors of the party animals and bananas represented up in the sky. Jetting out in every which way. Fired off in trios. Beautiful trickle. The pink going straight up. The yellow tailing off right and left and drifting down and fading out into the sky. Not being turned off immediately, kind of like someone's got a dimmer on them, but it's a pretty quick dimmer. Now the sparkly boys come flying up into the air. Beautiful gold in the background Ooh. and silver on the tips. Uh. Flashing and strobing. Like it's 3 a.m. and we're in pump out in Los Angeles. Those blasting out. Like it looks like you're smashing the top of a cactus and the juice spring in every which way. Look at these jobbers. Fantastic. Purple and pink up top. A bright silver down low. Some more shivery jobbers flying up to the sky. Kind of like tinsel caught on your shoe when you're walking away from the Christmas tree. Now some yellow and some pink trailing out, drifting around like a leaf in the sky, but there's no wind. It's just kind of drifting, not going one way or the other, just letting gravity do its work. Some more sparks flying. Green, the shade of mint ice cream. 
going up five at a time and turning into a really plethora of sparks. Dipping and diving this way and that like bugs when you swat at them, but they just want to get to the light. Now red, white, and blue. A patriotic barrage high in the sky in Tampa. Classic firework form. No rhyme or reason to the shape, but beautiful colors and big old bangs. Really good mass on the red, white, and blue. Perfectly evenly distributed as we get some yellow and purple. LSU vibes. Coming up red with a little back sprinkle of white like lightning bugs who have had too much caffeine. An incredible sparkle, but out in an instant. Like shooting stars heading up to the sky. Kind of like someone grabbed a handful of pebbles and floral them all in one time towards the water. Now blue with kind of a burnt red. Wow, three colors for the price of one. Twinkling and spiraling down into the sky. Jetting out like crabgrass. Blue and red coming up high. Turning into twinkly boys. Descending from the night. And now a classic palm tree effect. With purple finger fingertips. Oh, a beautiful display. Filling up the night above GMS Field. Terrific pace. Oh, and some squiggly boys at the end there. A tie-dye type effect. The fans are loving it. Now green, blue, red, blasting out in every which way. They look like sea turtles who have been spooked by a shark. Slow on land, but surprisingly quick in a pinch out in the water. The green, blue, and red descending down into orange and gold. Looks like jet streams going every which way. Little twirl to them as well, and now the bangs are enveloping the ears of a full capacity spring training ballpark here for the New York Yanks. Tons of pops and splats in the background. Perfect little circles like the stress balls you get to squeeze when you're having a tough day. At a furious, a furious pace, and that's that. Very creative fireworks display here in Tampa, and here's Jesse Cole. Thank you so much, two electric nights here. We love you guys. The whole team is gonna be out front in the plaza party to hang out with you guys, meet and greet. Thank you, Banana Nation, we love you guys. And tonight will end like every night ends in Banana Land with a party out at the only gate we have. I oh, love to hear it. A young chap lets us know he's subscribed to the YouTube. One of over 400,000. We can't thank you all enough. What a wild ride. These first 28 games of the tour have been, and after one of the better banana ball games of all time last night, a laugher for the bananas as they take down the Major League Baseball Players Alumni Association, eight to nothing. Yeah, it was a very solid and convincing win for the Savannah Bananas. I mean, we saw them just, we saw them do everything essentially right. We saw them get guys on base. We saw them do very well with their sprint defense. And for the pitchers, good control, a lot of strikeouts, and a very limited amount of walks for them as well. 
Banana Ball history tonight. The most walk-offs ever in a game by far. Eight of them for the Bananas uh, in every inning where they had a chance to win it. Well, they did just that all the way up into the ninth when Matt Malatesta was able to slam the door. Uh, the former major leaguers, bolstered by some new talent with some vets as well, with Montanez, Morse, uh, uh, Kataris, Bell, and Ballister. There she blows. Didn't, almost had a Rick Perry moment there. Uh, those guys trying to impart that wisdom. Heath and Jake Peavy both shared on the broadcast. It's the pace of the game that gets on these guys. And uh, you could see it out there. As much as you could prepare and study the rules, there is nothing like playing the sport of banana ball. But, but really what you still like seeing at the end of the day is just how much fun the MLB guys had out there on the field, regardless of the result. I mean, you saw Colin Ballister having a great time. Michael Morse, two bat flips. Luis Matinez got to play in the outfield with his bare feet. I mean, you got to see the MLB guys kind of do it all. Yeah, no, it was it was a really cool night. Incredible to see Bronson Arroyo start, get him mic'd up, get him on the broadcast in the booth, and then hear him uh, doing what he does best nowadays, which is play music. And um, I'll tell you what, Josh, I'm going to check out the Bronson Arroyo, uh, Arroyo CD that is out, and uh, I have have to get to one of these PV and Arroyo combination concerts. Yeah, we'll, uh, our agents will be in touch with their agents. We'll, we'll figure something out about that. Yeah, that, uh, that is in the near future. Uh, really cool to see Nick Swisher, uh, a, a Yankees hero, especially in 2009 when, when he won it all the last time that the 27-time World Series champs have done it, uh, and also an all-star in the following season for the Bronx Bombers, out there in, in what feels like probably the right place for him for the rest of his life. I could see a Bill Lee-esque career coming in banana ball for Swishalish. Yeah, and the crazy thing is is you'll probably still see him roaming in right field while he's doing that. It just speaks to the talent that Nick Swisher has and just his dedication and love for the game of baseball and banana ball. Yeah, and uh, in the home run, hello everybody. Thank you so much for all the waves. It's like college game day up here on the post game show. We love you all. Yes, banana ball. That's huge. That's what I'm talking about. Banana. Yeah, some minion action out there as well. Uh, yeah, Swisher, of course, uh, has teamed up with our good buddy Johnny Gomes, one of the first guys to get involved in banana ball back on uh, the Challenger Series against the Kansas City Monarchs last May. And uh, Swisher and Gomes competing in the Home Run Derby X, which they will be back doing. Uh, I know Swish has to fly out and get up to Fairfax, Virginia to start training for it tomorrow. So we really appreciate him taking some time out of the busy schedule to grace us with his presence in Banana Land and uh, exciting to see what's going to happen in that Home Run Derby X round two as Swisher was able to take down Gomes in the first season. Yeah, it was really, really fun. Just a good event for Major League Baseball to really get some more energy in the game. Yeah, no, it's uh, it, it's all fun and games, man. We're here to bring joy to the world. Uh, I think that's a song and it was, it was another magical night. Incredible evening in George M. Steinbrenner Field last night as, as far as a ball game goes with the four-run rally with two outs in the bottom of the ninth for the Bananas. And then uh, just a lot of really cool moments tonight in a dominating win for the Bananas, who improved to 12-14-2. So a couple games under 500. They are 3-1 and one in Challenger games, have won the series against the MLBPAA. will go for the sweep in Savannah on September 3rd. Uh, but still, as I mentioned, four games back of the Party Animals, who they will not see for another 10 days because the next stop is Kansas City. Round two of the Challenger Series against the 2021 American Association champion Kansas City Monarchs. It'll be a three-game set, and uh, after the two teams split the two games last year in Legends Field, it's all on the line, and uh, I can't tell you how excited I am for it. It's going to be a very competitive series for the Bananas and the Monarchs. I mean, the Monarchs, just like the MLB PAA guys and the other challengers we've seen so far, a very competitive baseball club. And I think it's going to come down to just who's able to master banana ball the best so far, as we've seen in the Bananas Challenger games, being three and one, the Bananas really, really good at their sport of banana ball. Well, it's interesting because the Monarchs won the first Challenger game of all time. They won three to two last year on May 6th, and the Bananas were able to come back on May 
May 7th thanks to uh, a Bill Leroy home run, a monster shot in KC. They split the series one to one. And then this past weekend, we saw the Bananas kind of jump out in front and out banana ball the Charleston Dirty Birds. Also, three homers to none on night one in a 4-2 victory helps the cause as well. But the Atlantic League foes up there in the capital of West Virginia, uh, they were really impressive in night two, won five to two. Um, so we've seen uh, kind of a, a tale of two possibilities in these series of, you know, these teams are incredibly talented. Their resumes, uh, as far as baseball goes, are, are more impressive than the bananas when you stack them up. But you hit the, you hit the nail on the head. This is banana ball, and it'll be the 29th, 30th, and 31st games of the tour for the Nanners. First three of uh, the summer, or the, the uh, tour, rather, for the Monarchs. I mean, there's a degree to where experience really does carry a lot of favor for you in the sport of banana ball. So I think we're in store for a lot of magic in Kansas City. I mean, you talked about the Bill Roy home run, one of the most magical moments I think we've seen in tour history. And I'm sure we're going to see some great appearances from Stilts, Bill Lee, and a whole cast of other people. It was great to see Stilts get a full inning in the books tonight. He looked good on the bump. Bill Lee throwing for the bananas against his uh, MLB PAA compadres. By the way, Bill Lee, one of the first people in uh, Major League Baseball history to get involved with the MLB Players Alumni Association. So um, it, it's so cool to see that all come to fruition and uh, be able to, to do battle a couple times on the tour. We'll have one more. Okay, next Thursday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. We will be live with the pregame show. 7 p.m. first pitch from Legends Field. Three-game set. Bananas versus the Monarchs. The rematch of the first Challenger Series of all time. It is going to be a blast. Can't wait to do it. Some shout-outs here before we close it down from George M. Steinbrenner Field. Our incredible crew uh, starting with the folks in Savannah in the control room. Griffin Ellis, as he has been for all 28 games on the tour. Our technical director pressing all the right buttons all the time. Griff, you are a legend of the game, my dear friend. On audio tonight, Bella, great work on the ones and the twos. On the replay, Dakota Burns said, that's what I'm talking about. Replays were on point tonight. Dakota, you're turning into a Swiss Army knife of the team here. Can't tell you how much we appreciate that. On graphics, Julia, she is turning into a really dependable uh, control room member there. Uh, incredible work. On the score bug, Kwanzi. That's what I'm talking about. Kwan's Master Supreme. Really good stuff, dude. On on the first base camera, the iron horse of Bananas TV. Uh, we all know her. We all love her. Emerson Elmgren has now uh, been on the first base or third base cam or roaming cam in approximately uh, 129 straight Bananas or Banana Ball games. On uh, Across the Diamond, Taylor Finneran, really good stuff from you, Taylor. Dynamic duo at both corners of the infield. On High Home tonight, Hope! That's what I'm talking about. First Banana Ball game of all time. Good work there, Hope. On the low home, it was Nick Keldy. Uh, talk about a Swiss Army knife. That guy does it all. On the center field camera, Ben Barks. So cool getting to take Ben on his first trip of the tour. He locks down center field cam in Grayson Stadium all the time. He is just as good when we are outside of the friendly confines. On the roaming camera, Chris Haynes, best in the biz at everything he does. On the fan cam tonight, Paula, great work on back-to-back -back nights. Our moderators in the chat, Katrissa Ballet, Colbyte, and Scott Thompson. Welcome to the BTV crew. Tremendous job by all of you. Thank you so much to everybody who watched. Thanks to my color commentator, Josh Chalevsky. Superb as always, buddy. And the Biko, same to you, big guy. I had so much fun with you in Tampa this weekend. For the straw that stirs the drink of BTV, our coordinating producer, Chad Reese, the man with the master plan. And everybody who popped on the broadcast, shout out Heath Bell, Bronson Arroyo, Jake Peavy. On the mics, Bronson once again, Andrew Miller. Miller, Lou Pinella, Sweet Lou, are you kidding me? Tonight was a dream. I am Vico Scala saying so long for now. We'll see you Thursday night in Kansas City, Kansas for the third Challenger Series of the Tour in the fourth all time. Nanners win this one eight to nothing. They are now just two games out under 500 and looking to stay hot in Legends Field. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you Thursday night. And of course, we'll see you later.